everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I am so excited to be a guest designer for The Greeting Farm. As you guys know, I love the stamp company. They make the cutest little images. And today I'm gonna share with you guys how I made five Valentine's Day cards really quick and easy. I'm gonna show you the coloring process of most of this and kind of how I designed them. But the two sets that I used are forever with you and hashtag couple goals. They're so stinking cute. And I am going to show you guys how I slightly alter one of the stamps to be more personalized for one of the recipients. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a little bit of washi tape to mask off the kitty ears before I ink up the stamp. Then I remove the washi tape and then I stamp out the image so the little pointed ears are gone and I'm using a Copic multi-liner. This is a 0 0.05 and I'm going to just going to doodle in little puppy dog ears. If I made them longer, it could be like a bunny rabbit. If I made them little round half circles, it could be more like a teddy bear. It's so easy to alter these really cutesy, simple images. And this particular person who's going to be getting this loves dogs. So I'm going to doodle on these little ears and then I'm also going to make a little spot on the left side here. Oh, I doodled in a little nose to give it more of a doggy look than a kitty look. And I'm doodling on that little spot there, kind of going over the top whisker. Now I'm just going to show you guys all of the coloring. So for this first couple, I'm going to do a senior couple. This is going to be a card for my parents. And I'm going to use some facial or skin tone colors that have more of a yellowish undertone because that's how they they are. <laughs> They're Asian, obviously, as I am. So I'm using like an E50, an E51, and an R30 to give them just slightly rosy cheeks. If I wanted to have it more kind of red rosy, I would use an R20 probably, or even an R21. Um, but this I'm just blending back out from the shadowed areas underneath their hair, by the sides of their face with the E50, and the shadowed areas I did with a 51. Now for the gentleman's hair, I'm using a C0 just to kind of mark in where I think the shadows are going to be. And then I'm using a slightly darker C3. So these cool gray tones I think are great, especially when they're combined with white areas. Um, I could have left it almost like this, um, but I decided to add in the darker hair because my dad really has salt and pepper hair. I guess more white now as he's in his 80s, but um, you know, there's still hints of the black hair interspersed with the silver hair. So I wanted to give that sense and I really wanted to add in the texture of the hair, which is great in this image. And I'm going to give slightly lighter silver hair to the image that's going to represent my mom. So I'm adding a C double zero. And by the way, if you're interested in the exact colors that I use, I have all of them listed for each of the images that I color up in my accompanying blog post, which is linked in the description box below. But basically you see here where there are kind of valleys in her hair. Um, I'm adding the darker tones as if it's like a valley and the bump outs are kind of highlighted with the lighter tones. And I'm going in again also with a C7. I could have, like I said, for the gentleman, also not use such a dark, cool gray. I could have stopped at a C5, but I wanted to give her all of that depth of uh, color. And also you see that her hair extends down a little bit further beyond her scarf, but I've just rounded the bottom because my mom doesn't have long hair. She has short hair. And I'm using a Signo Uniball white gel pen to add white, more white to their hair. And you see that it kind of covers up the darker shadowed areas, but I'm going to fix that. But I just wanted to show you guys how you can, you know, go back and forth between light and dark, especially with white, if that's part of the color scheme of what you're coloring up with gel pens. Now I'm going back in after the white gel pen has completely dried and make sure it has completely dried if you're going to do this over coloring over top of the white gel pen because you don't want to ruin the nibs of your Copic markers. But you can do that if the gel pen has fully, fully dried. So I'm adding some more shadows back in with a C3 and a C5. And now for their scarf, since this is going to be a Valentine's Day card, I'm adding some hearts. And you can see they're not all hearts straight across in a row. I wanted it to really look like how hearts would be on a big scarf. So some of them are partial hearts, the bottoms, the sides. I just wanted to kind of intersperse them throughout the scarf 
part of this image and I'm just again doodling those in and then I'm going to quickly color them up with an R I believe this is a 24 or 27 so I love this color combination of red with blue greens so I'm coloring up the base of the scarf with the BG 11 and it's reading really really pale so you'll see I'm going to try and add in some of the shadowing with the BG 23 which is good um, and it does add shadows like under the chin where the scarf overlaps or under, you know, is under the other side. But I really need more, you know, contrast. So I'm doing a tip to tip coloring, touching the tip of the BG23 to the BG49 and then coloring with that ink that's transferred onto the lighter pen color. And you can see that that adds a really good gradation. And that's the finished card. I'm going to go back and show you guys how I composed it, but I wanted to show you all of the coloring. I'm actually coloring up five different couples, but I'm going to show you, I think, four of them fully. The video is starting to get really long, so as you can see here, I'm, I've sped up this coloring process. If you want to see it in real time, you can slow down the video, but I wanted to go ahead and try and include as much as I can so that for those of you who are interested in seeing, you know, kind of repetitious, but um, how I go about coloring these little images, you can see that here. I'm using an E000, a 00, a 01, and an R30 to color up this little cute couple that I'm going to color up to be kind of, you know, middle-aged folks. <laughs> um, this is for my sister and her husband, and they're taking a little selfie. They like to travel a lot, or they used to before COVID hit, and so I wanted this to represent kind of their... Um, life that they hope to get back to. Um, so I'm coloring up their skin that way and adding some rosy cheeks with some R30, blending out those rosy areas with the E00. And then I'm adding some little shoes for the girls. I don't know why these images don't have shoes for the little girls. They have them for the boys. I don't know. <laughs> so I doodled on those little shoes and I'm coloring up the shoes in bright red because I just thought that would be nice and festive. And it reminds me of when I was a little girl and I love these red Mary Janes that I had. Um, so this little boy shirt, I thought it was a little too plain just to be all red. So I am doodling in, um, in a second here, the uh, stripes on his shirt. And you see here, I've just decided to repeat the color for the shirt of the girl that's being held up, the dress of the little girl that's holding the camera. And I'm adding some shadows where I think there might be kind of um, the fabric might have cinched a little or where there's a little shadow under her chin or on the edges of the dress. Um, and I'm giving her a cap sleeve here because my sister wouldn't wear a sleeveless dress. Um, and I'm, of course, adding these little polka dots and that little cuff sleeve of that dress with a Copic multiliner pen again. This is one of my favorite things to do to add a little detail, add a little um, something that personalizes an image to the recipient. Uh, and here, like I said, I'm adding stripes to this little boy's shirt just for some added interest uh, to this little image. Although it's such a cute image, you don't need anything. But I just thought to add a little bit back of the kind of darker tones. I'm using a C10 for the shoes of the little boys. And now I'm going to go back in and color in some kind of cool grays for this little boy's pants, starting off with the lightest color, C2, adding a little shadow with a C4, or maybe that's a C5, and then I'm blending with a C4. And I decide I'm going to try and do that same light gray color for the little boy, but I'm going to think better of it in a minute. <laughs> um, I'm coloring the inside of his mouth dark, cool gray, but I'm going to leave the bottom half white. I could have left it like teeth or later on, I think I actually color it like it's a tongue. But here you see I'm coloring the pants up again the same way as I did for the little boy holding up the girl um, for the boy here, just with you know, simple medium tone grays. And then here I decide I, um, oh, see there, I'm coloring in the tongue for the little boy. <laughs> and I'm going to repeat this lighter gray tone for this little girl's skirt. I thought I would try to keep these color palettes pretty tight. Gray, black, red, um, and then skin tones and hair tones. And all of these uh, characters are having brunette hair, black, silver, um, brunette dark brown kind of colors um just because that happens to be the people who are going to be receiving these cards 
And here I decide, as you can see, I've decided to color up that shirt red because I thought it was that boy was turning out too muted as compared to the little girl with a polka dot dress. And I just thought he needed a little more, you know, pop for his shirt. Now here you see me doodling in the bottom of this girl's hair. My sister does not have long hair anymore. So I thought I would just give her a little bob. I'm not worried about the part underneath uh, because I'm just going to be fussy cutting all of this out. And here you see this little couple, the boy holding up the little girl is representing my nephew and his girlfriend. So I'm giving him neutral grays. Um, I usually do cool grays for uh, Asian hair, but I thought I would just mix it up and add some neutral grays. And I'm adding some highlights with the blue quadruple zero. I'm finding that the quadruple zero is a little bit too faint. So I think I end up adding a darker blue, but we'll see. And you see me just blending out, flicking, coloring. Yeah, here we go, B double zero. So it's a little bit darker blue. I just wanted to give him higher highlights. And I'm using the same color for the boy up top. Um, but mind you, I'm going to be adding some silver tones to that. So uh, I think you're going to see again the use of the gel pen. But here I'm just trying to figure out kind of where the little... Um, sections of hair are going to be connecting to where the little boy's part is. And it's funny because my brother-in-law also parts his hair way over to the side. He's not going bald or anything. He has a full head of hair, but I just think it's funny that that little image was like that too. So I'm giving him some more depth of color in his hair with an N2, an N5, an N6. Um, and I'm not trying to cover up the whole part of his hair because he does have some silver hair. So I wanted to leave some of those highlights to the extent I could while still trying to, you know, maintain the different uh, texture of the hair, the different segments of the hair from the image. So I'm going back in and adding the depth of color with that N6. Uh, and the N5 to blend to the N2. And here you see me adding the highlights with the white gel pen. And I really like how this looks. You have to be careful because sometimes the gel pen ink just runs out really fast and sometimes it doesn't come out at all. If it doesn't come out, just rub it against your finger, the warmth of your finger. Um, but it was kind of just oozing out here. So I'm going back in here again after the gel pen had dried with some N5 for that kind of reinstating kind of the darker shadows for that guy's hair. For this girl who represents my sister, I've added darker blue. It's a B double zero and I'm going in with lighter N zero and N three. Um, and I think, you know, I'm adding lots of flicking to give a good hair texture, but it's just too light. Um, so I'm adding some N5, and I think that's a pretty good balance. It's not too dark. She's decided to let her hair go naturally silver. Um, so I think that N5 is actually pretty close to how her hair color is at this point. Um, and I really like how that blends nicely together. Those neutral grays, which I don't often use, I found really easy to use here. Now for this girl that's being held up by um, my nephew, I've decided to give her like a warmer uh, brunette color. So I'm doing an E40 for the lightest shade. And I'm going in and marking in where the darkest shadows would be with the W7. That's warm gray. So the under parts of the bottom of her hair where the hair indents from the top crown to the side um, on both sides of her hair uh, on her face. And then I'm blending back in with that W4. And uh, I think I go back over trying to find another mid-tone. So I'm going in to get a little bit more of a deeper tone to her hair because she has essentially black hair. It's just a little bit warmer in shade. So I add that W5, an extra layer of texture and depth for this image. And then for the darkest areas, I decide I'm going to go all in, go with the W9 and get really, really dark where the hair would be um, shadowed from her face along the sides at the deepest shadows. And this is the paper pad I used. I had a, like a third of this paper pack left. It's from Doodlebug Design. And that's the die set I use for all of these cards. It makes it really simple to design cards when you just limit the number of products you're using. And that's a Darice die set 
called Love Theme, and I'll put a link in the description box below. I've had this for a couple of years, but I know it's still available and on sale, so I'll link that. I love this die set. It's so simple, but there's so much you can do with it because it has that scalloped heart die frame and so you get the inside inset and then it has an XOXO and it also has an arrow. So I've stacked the frame heart, you know, with multiple layers and glued those together so that I can get the depth of like a thicker. And I've done a couple of layers for this XOXO and I'm just trying to position this XOXO underneath with enough space above and below. This is a slightly larger than normal card uh, because this is for my parents and they like larger cards. <laughs> so it's not the standard size, but you get the idea. And all of these cards I've decided to really take time to decorate the interior. And I think all of the papers pretty much are from that paper pad from Doodlebug Designs called Love Birds, if I didn't mention that previously. And I'm just using the extras. The heart, the small hearts are from the O's and the larger heart is from the inside of the frame. And I'm just going to place them inside. Um, I have this XOXO pattern paper also from the background cutout. And that's the completed card for my parents. And you can see the front and the inside there. And I think it came out really cute. This is the card for my nephew and his girlfriend, slightly more simplified. And that's the interior. I had some scraps of paper, also that silver paper that's the inside liner I had in my scrap box. And I'm just showing you, this is how I'm putting the cards together. I have the background, uh, pattern paper. Then I have the frame that I've layered. As you can see, that's a different pattern on the underside um, that I put the thicker level. And then I decide what pattern paper I'm going to use for behind the little couple. And I glue those in place. And then I pop up the actual couple image on foam dots. This is a card that I've made for a friend who loves cats. That's the front and that's the inside. And then I'm going to show you the front and the inside of the card for my niece and her boyfriend. This is one that I use that die of the arrow. I cut it in half and split it so that it would go on either side of the heart. And this is for my sister and her husband. That's the front and that's the inside. I use scraps, obviously, for the inside liner. And I think it looks great to add some interest. And this is a picture of all five cards. I think it came out really cute. It was super fast and easy. If you get a chance, please go check out the greeting from. They have such adorable images. Thank you so much for sticking with me and watching this coloring process video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you guys are having a wonderful crafty day.